Okay, welcome back to what will be episode 3 of Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monster Coliseum. Last time we dueled Duke and Tristan in the Condemned Warehouse and the Voltage Cage in a slightly disjointed episode, but we managed to beat them both and now we can move on and hopefully finish off the first area of the game in today's episode. So our first opponent today will be Tear on, sac on the Sacred Street. And I'm also very glad that she has water monsters by the looks of things, because, well, we did lose our Fire Reaper right at the end of that last duel. But, uh, you know, let's just, uh, see what Tear has to say at the start of this match. Honestly, I'm, ho I'm hoping this stage is cool. I mean, the other ones have been, so I imagine this one will have some unique twists as well. to duel against you to see how I would do. Ah, but don't expect me to take it easy on you, Taya. Of course not. I'll never forgive you if you treat me with kitty gloves. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so, uh, two things. One, I do think it's really cool how this is like a, this is a nice little Christmas looking stage. That's kind of cool. But, like, genuine question. Like, I've noticed, I noticed it for, for Joey and Tristan and now Taya. Why do they all just have their, like, uh, Domino High School uniforms? Why don't they have, like, their Battle City outfits or anything? Like, because this game came out in, like, 2005. Duelist Kingdom was done ages before this came out. Wait, she has a water, she has a water symbol, but primarily light monsters by the looks of things. Wait, wait, wind is strong against water, okay, which actually puts me at even, which actually puts me at even better of an advantage. So, let's grab Baby Dragon, let's grab two Kaminari Kozus, and Root Water. Actually, uh, let's take one of these guys out, and instead put in the... Yeah, I guess I'll just put in Steel Scorpion. Although I could bring Scalangel because it is level 2. Uh, no, I'll bring Steel Scorpion. I'll bring I'll bring Steel Scorpion and I guess I can bring Psychic Kappa because it fills the space. Okay. Also, I will notice, I did notice that now we can bring 7 monsters on this stage. So I guess this one's going to be maybe a bit bigger than the previous stages we've had access to. But yeah, so as you can see, uh, you, this is what it's like when you place them all manually. It takes a little while, but it's a... Uh, wow, that baby dragon has a lot of range. So yeah, it's maybe a little impractical, but to be honest, it's worth it for the tactical espionage. I don't know why I nearly said the tactical espionage action. We aren't playing Metal Gear Solid. I mean, it was published by Konami, so... I, I don't know. I, I mean, that aren't... There's a couple of Metal Gear cards in the thing. It's time. Like the tactical ex uh, the tactical espionage expert card I think exists, right? Okay, so turn one, let's just uh, summon up a couple of our monsters and see what Tear will do on her turn. I will say I do I really like the look of this stage. It looks really fun. I'm hoping it's I'm hoping it's as Next, fun as it looks. It's my turn. Also, I think that I think the symbol having like the wings does look really cool. Okay, so she summoned two petite moths and a root water. Okay, so she did bring root water as well. Okay, I'll summon up the last of my monsters. So uh, let's do this, and we can now start our opening well, offensive maneuvers, I guess. So I'll just uh, move forward with the steel scorpion, and I. Yes, we just move forward with Root Water. And, okay, I was going to say, and move forward with Psychic Kappa, but definitely we don't have enough space to do that. Also, if Root Water survives this, it should level up. Okay, and her two light monsters are both Happy Lover. Oh, wait, no, she brought two, okay, she brought two Happy Lovers and a Skellangel. So that's good information to have. Okay, so... 
let's see here. Thunder is strong against light, so I want to get these monsters moving. Wow! I know I saw, like, I remember I saw that in the Duel with Tristan, but that range is ridiculous. Like, Kaminari Kozu just jumping all over the shop. And Baby Dragon gets a lot of movement as well. Okay, so let's just keep going. And move everyone just up the street. Everyone just kind of slowly making their way up the street. Making their way downtown. Uh, in the case of one of my monsters, moving extremely fast. Okay, Happy Lover gets a lot of movement as well. Wow. I did not think they would move that far that fast. But we should be okay. Oh wait, of course she has a couple of wood monsters, because wood beats wind, right? Yes, wood beat wi beats wind. Okay, so light is here. Can I hit that from this range? I can. It'll, it'll hit for 113. Uh, can I get... I can't get that in range to hit anything, though. So you can stay where you are this turn. And Steel Scorpion can land an attack on the Happy Lover, just for a nice chunk of damage out. Okay, so we got a nice little chunk oh, of damage. That looks painful. And now Root Water can finish off that first Happy Lover. And we have the first kill on the board. So I'll call that a momentary W. Oh, and we got a level up. Oh, we can level up in the middle of duels? That's huge. That was your first, but it will that definitely is not be your last. That is genuinely very good information to have. It's destroyed. Okay, so let's move Baby Dragon forward. Uh, I don't want to take two hits, so I'll move actually towards the side. I think just a little bit to the side, and then I'll move move Psychic Kappa forward. And just because I can, I'll move my symbol just kind of off towards the corner of the stage, I think. I mean, I say that, we can move one step at a time. It's going to be a very slow process. But let's see what this happy lover does now. Goes straight for root water. Okay. But I can just finish this one off this turn. And, and then focus on the scalangel. Because root water is... Like, their root water is, the, is probably the thing I should be most worried about. As a problem, no wait, yeah, my my monster that's weak to wood is all the way over here. Okay, what's in range here? We can get 101 damage or Steel Scorpion. Steel Scorpion is out for blood in this game apparently. Huh? Like, what? why is this? Like, why is this monster not garbage? Like, genuinely, why is this monster being actually kind of good? Okay, let's land a hit with Kaminari Kozu. I don't think I've shown its attack animation yet, so let's just throw that back on. Actually, no, I think we saw it when Tristan used it, but whatever, we'll see it again, just in case. Okay, we just uh, shoot some cool purple lightning and do a nice chunk of damage to her root water. 86 brings down to a nice round 100. And now, uh, Root Water can probably just do a ton of damage here. How much does Psychic Kappa do? 89? That does 89, so I need, what, 91? 80? Really? Okay, that's inconvenient. But what if I just attack with Baby Dragon? Baby Dragon just hits for a ton. Maybe I should... Wait. Oh, I should, I should have actually went for the kill with Baby Dragon. Whatever. It'll be fine. Actually, no. Because if monsters do evolve in this game... Do I... If monsters evolve in this game, by leveling up Baby Dragon, will it evolve naturally or will I need Time Wizard? No, don't... Don't tell me. But, like, it would stand to reason oh, that I might need I Time Wizard. That at all. Because, well, you need Time Wizard to summon the monster, so I guess that makes sense. Anyway, let's just finish off this happy lover. So that is two of her monsters gone, and we are making pretty good time through this fight. Okay, that was a much lower amount of EXP that we got that turn, though. And I suppose I can just move Psychic Kappa 
Uh, actually, Psychic Kappa gets more attack. Yeah. You know, I'll just leave Psychic Kappa where it is and just continue to move my ice symbol, just kind of uh, off towards the corner. You know, where no one will see it. <laughs> no one will see it. It's just, it's just, just in the corner. To stage my comeback. I mean, look, I've seen me playing games before. I've watched me play games before. I know oh, that I have a pretty solid chance of messing this up and throwing, so yeah. Here I go! Prepare to take some damage! I mean, she wasn't lying. She definitely did some damage. If that's all the damage you can, then no, because now Petite Moth will boof. Yeah, that'll now just go for the kill on Kaminari Kozu. So, uh, yeah, I kind of wasted that, but we should be okay. And that Petite Moth is also just a well, as you can see, the damage is very clearly reflected on it. It's all kind of cracked. So that means it'll be definitely going down within the next turn or two, depending on, like, uh, movement and where I am. But either way, we are making very good progress towards actually when... Oh? Time hits midnight. It's going to go to New Year's? Or Christmas? What's happening here? Okay, lights go out. Lights come on. No, lights go out. Do all the monsters... Do dark monsters get a boost now? What happens? Okay. Okay, it's actually Christmas now. Okay. So, now let's just try to, to win this match quick. Because, well, I don't know what's going on anymore, and I, also, I don't know if the soundtrack is going to be, like... Can you copyright claim the soundtrack on this? I don't know. Oh, if it's, like, an original composition or what. Either way, I'm just going to go and try to secure the win as fast as I can here. So, uh, let's just move Steel Scorpion back, land another hit on Rootwater. We don't quite get the kill, but we can basically guarantee ourselves a win within the next couple of turns. So, Psychic Kappa... Uh, can't quite get a hit in here, but I can just move it to there for safety, and just uh, move forward and have root water secure another kill, wiping out the Skellangel. Okay, two monsters left, and they are both petite marks, and one of them is already weakened, so uh, yeah, this is looking pretty good for my odds of victory right now. And honestly, I'll oh wait, I, yeah, I didn't kill, oh, another one for monsters. Okay, I can finish off probably two of them this turn. Still, Scorpion will take a lot of damage here, but we should be okay. So, uh, we'll take a chunk of damage. But we can retaliate and uh, wipe out, out all of her stuff within the next few turns. I'm very confident that I win here, and there's not really much she can do about it. So, let's, uh, let's just use... Let's just move over here. Actually, Root Water doesn't even have to move. I can just hit it from over here. So there goes her root water. So that is two monsters left. Okay, we got another chunk of EXP. And now let's uh, move forward with Steel Scorpion. And I know that Baby Dragon is weak to wood monsters, but I might as well just move everyone in. Like, might as well just move everyone in and try to get through here as quickly as we can. And uh, let's, let's end our turn and see what kind of player Taya has to make. Like, because I, well, realistically, she can't do a whole lot. She's definitely, like, all in on the back foot here. Like, there's very little she can do, realistically, in this situation to turn the game around. But then again, you know, stranger things have happened. Also, I wish I could kind of, like, jump over this little taxi. That'd be great. Also, can I change the camera? Yes, I can. Great. 10 out of 10, episode 3, and we are learning the controls. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just turn the camera so it's on my side so I can see where I'm going with things. Okay, so I'll move, I'll move Steel Scorpion to there just for now, and I'll move Baby Dragon one tail to the left. Sorry, that was the right. Either way, we are making pretty good progress. And now it's basically just kind of just gradually just like closing the box in, basically. We're basically just like slowly closing the box in around Taya and eventually we win. 
Okay, I guess that petite moth is being sent out as basically a sacrifice. Not that it's going to make any difference at all, but, you know. Uh, so, let's just quickly secure the kill with Steel Scorpion here, and we can be on our way. Okay, so, that is another one down. Steel Scorpion getting more... <laughs> Steel Scorpion has probably gotten more, more screen time in these first three episodes than it ever had had previously. I say that like I know... I say that like I know if it was ever good in the actual TCG. Was it ever good in the actual TCG? I don't actually know. I think I've seen, like... I th actually, do I even have the Steel Scorpion card? I think I do. I think I have most of the cards involved in this duel, actually. Like, I know I have Petite Marv. I know I have Root Water. I know I have... Uh, I know I have Skellingel. Actually, I, n I never had Happy Lover, I never had... Uh, and I never had Kaminari Kozu. And I only got Skellingel, like, way later in one of the... Uh, I think it was in, like, one of the Structure decks released during GX? Like, I think I have Skellingel once or twice. Aww. Either way, we should be able to finish this duel off there. I'm going to say next turn because evidently we have basically closed the entire box in. I say that with just one... I say that with the entire other side just completely open, but without... But, like, their movement options are basically completely exhausted. There's nothing to really do here. Kind of sucks that we can't just go around the lamppost, though. So that may actually be an inconvenience. Okay, so what's going to happen now? Oh, is time resetting? Okay, you know, power of love and friendship stops the snow. Yes, time goes backwards. No, it's 2 a.m. Okay, it's 2 a.m. And it goes back to 11. So now the snow stops, the lights come back on. Okay, and the music should go back to normal now, I think, right? In theory, hopefully, does it? Yes, it does. Perfect. Just in time for me to secure the win. Because... Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Stupid lamp post. Either way, Steel Scorpion can just, uh, land a hit and, and uh, secure the kill. That is game. And that is Tear Defeated. So I will call that another win, because that is exactly yep. what it was it is. It's impossible to beat you, Ruth. You're awesome. No, it's... No, uh, I mean... Canonically, it's quite difficult. Uh, I'm probably garbage at this. But well, let's see what she... Let's see what Taya has to say about the loss. Oh no! I lost! Still, I had a lot of fun. How about you, Yugi? Did you have a good time? Yes, it was an excellent duel. <laughs> Thanks. Ugh. Um, Yugi? What is it, Taya? Well, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Thank you! Okay, cool, we won. Also, I don't know if it's funny or inconvenient, but it seems just that my that the emulator appears to just want to slow down during those. I'm just going to hope that it's funny. Okay, so I can pick two monsters here. Uh, I will take a second root water and another scalangel, I think. Wait, wait, wait. So, it, since it specifies the levels, I imagine as we go on, we'll probably actually get to win higher level monsters. But I'm still going to take the root water, and I'll take one of the happy lovers, just because I already have a scalangel and it's something new to have. So, let's see here. Well, first, uh, first things first, let's save the game. I'll just, I'll just make a second save. If, just because I can, really. Honestly, I should probably just do a save. I should do a different save after each duel. But, I, th I think I might do that going forward. But let's see here, who is our final opponent in this area? Because, well, there's five opponents in each place, and we have now beaten four. And our final opponent will be... Grandpa on the challenger's stage with his Earth 
Okay, he he runs Earth. Interesting. Okay, let's uh, let's go and duel Grandpa and hopefully finish off Area One in this episode. Because I know that this game gets really hard really fast. At least from my experience, I remember it being really difficult. But uh, let's see how this goes. I see you're dueling well, Yugi. Grandpa! But let's see how well you do against me. I won't be able to let my guard down for a second. This is going to be my toughest duel yet. That's right. I may be old, but with age comes experience and knowledge. Now why don't we begin, Yugi? All right. It's time to duel. Okay, so let's see here. What does Grandpa have? Earth is weak to... Earth's weak to dark in this one, I think? Is Earth weak to dark? I think it is. Uh, uh, if you let your opponent attack first, you get to position your opponent. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll just go first. Okay, so Grandpa will start on the stairs on the wood side. But where on the fire side? He seems, to, he seems to have a lot of wind monsters. That's an interesting move from him, but okay. Okay, so let's see here. What, is, what does he have? Let's just kind of scout them out real quick. Okay, he has a Karibo, a Petite Moth, the right arm of the Forbidden One, a Cockroach Knight, and another Petite Moth. Okay, so the Cockroach Knight is obviously going to be, like, the big problem here. Like, that's evidently going to be his strongest monster. So I am going to want my stronger Fire Reaper. It's this one, right? Uh, how do I check? Oh, 5149. 91. Okay, yes, I want this Fire Reaper. I'll bring my Root Water. I'll bring... Uh... I'll bring Skellenjol. Wait, what did he have again? He had wood. Okay, he okay. He had wood and dark. So I can remember that now. Okay. Okay. So he brought wood and dark, which means uh, I'll bring Skellenjol. I might as well bring Happy Lover. I'll bring the other Fire Reaper. And uh, yeah, why not? I'll bring Baby Dragon as well. It's not practical because obviously it's a, like obviously it's impractical for me to do so because I'm bringing a wind monster into a duel against a lot of wood, odd monsters. But either way, I think we should be okay. Fire Reaper, like our stronger Fire Reaper, is probably going to be the kind of a key core component here. Okay, so duel number five. Turn one. It's time to so let's just. Well, as always, we'll just start up by summoning Fire Reaper, and I guess I'll also summon Happy Lover. And who else do I want to summon? Who can I summon? I guess I'll summon both Fire Reapers. Okay, so I summoned a Cherub and two uh, Fire Arrow Skeletons. Cool. Well, well, I better think carefully before attacking. Okay, so what is Grandpa going to do? He's going to summon Karibo. Okay, he summoned Karibo and the right arm of the Forbidden One, along with one of his Petite Moths. That is perfectly fine by me. Looking at this field, I feel pretty comfortable saying that these will flip every few turns. And either to a different type, or maybe they'll just be something completely different. But that is a massive... Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's an interesting one. Okay. So if I stand on this now, that'll flip. Okay, so the positioning of your monsters changes the other tiles on the board. That's an interesting one. Okay, I'll summon a root water. And uh, I'll summon my other two monsters next turn. I think I got kind of a, maybe a little overzealous on that. Like, I just went straight in on offense rather than actually waiting to get all my summons out. 
Okay, that is some fucking teeth moth, and is he gonna summon his cockroach knight? He hasn't summoned the cockroach knight yet. So that's interesting. Okay, so let's just summon up our baby dragon, summon up our skellangel, and get to work on fighting you. So, first things first, let's just move forward. We'll jump to plus 8 here, and can I get a kill in one? Not a kill in one, but we can get a nice chunk of damage out. So, uh, let's just turn and do the attack. Maybe Skellenshul would have killed in one. Obviously, we aren't using Skellenshul right now. It's uh, way back at our base. But let's just uh, see Happy Love as attack. Okay, just kind of shot a light ball, I suppose. 138 damage, so I can kill next turn. Whoa! I didn't expect that. I've played these games for years. I didn't expect an attack. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. Okay, let's uh, let's not move Root Water forward just yet. And I'll just move my two Fire Reapers. I think I'm going to just try to keep my two Fire Reapers just kind of around each other, I think. Because if I can use them to keep the tiles just always in their favor, I think I can use that to my advantage. It's not over. Okay, so is he going to summon that at night yet? He isn't, but he is going to attack. Okay, so we'll take a fair chunk of damage. Factor Rebo actually hit really hard, but we'll be okay. Because we don't quite lose our Fire Reaper yet, and we can guarantee to kill the Karibo this turn. It is a little curious that he hasn't summoned that knight yet, though. Like, I can only assume that as he'll only play it when I'm near... Like, I don't know, why isn't he using it? Like, genuinely, I'm a little bit confused by this. Why isn't he summoning it? Like, I'm sure there's some, like, actual tactical reason for this. But I can't think of why he would. Like, I don't know why he wouldn't just do that. Oh, how annoying. Actually, hang on, wait, when I win this, I, I can take a piece of Exodia and the Cockroach Knight. I imagine, like, I imagine it's, you can take some of the monsters that you've destroyed, but obviously we've won every duel so far by destroying all of our opponent's monsters, and honestly, I think that's probably going to be the strategy I, I approach for the remainder of the game with, because in general, I feel like it's a pretty solid strategy to work with, you know? Because, like, hey, if I can destroy everything I can, and I don't see why not. Like, I'm sure there is actually a full-on legitimate explanation as to why maybe you don't want to just destroy all of your monsters. Because, realistically... I wasn't concentrated, actually, and I paid for them. actually, no, it does make a lot of sense. Okay, there's the Cockroach Knight. Okay, so, so the Knight has hit the field. The knight has hit the field, and now I can start playing aggro. I can start playing a bit on the aggressive side. The question is, do I just one-shot on this? I do just one-shot that, but it's fantastic news. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll move, I'll move Happy Love over here, which should just, just, wow, it doesn't kill in one. Okay, that's fine though. We do half to the piece of Exodia. Can you take it easy? No, sorry, Grandpa. We ain't, we're playing a win here. That's uh, that's how tournaments are, you know. Oh, and also, you know, I I feel like Grandpa would be a little bit disappointed if Yuki just wasn't taking the game seriously. Okay, so let's move. Actually, I can do that. I think. If I move over to here, I can attack and destroy one Petit Moth. And is this my stronger Fire Reaper that I'm attacking with now? It is not. However, that also means I can now bring my stronger one forward one tile and attack to destroy the right arm of the Forbidden One. And now I'm in prime position to win on probably my next turn, if not the one after. And we can also quickly get that level up, up for our Fire Reaper. It won't heal it, I don't think. Mm, that but uh, I will call that a pretty good win. So we now, have a, we now have a few level 2 monsters, so that's pretty nice. I don't know what they max out at. 
I imagine it probably goes up to like 8. And Petite Moth attacks Happy Lover, not one of my Fire Reapers. Interesting. Like, you would have thought they would have gone for the kill on the Fire Reaper. Oh well, I'm not going to complain about it. And... Wait, Cockroach... Oh, Cockroach and I couldn't get an attack in. This is perfect for me. Can I... I probably can't one-shot it, though, can I? I can do 187 to it. So we definitely can't kill in one turn, but we can get a lot of damage out. So, let's move over to here. Let's move that over here. And I know that it's a wood monster, but I think I can do a lot. Never mind! Turns out that resistance is pretty big. But on the plus side, now I can just uh, take one step forward, just uh, land this, and there goes that petite moth. And now, all that stands between me and finishing off this area of the game is this cockroach knight. Which I don't really see being all that much of a threat. It might manage to destroy one of my monsters, but it is basically surrounded. And there's nothing he can do here. So, uh... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna bother moving the rest of my tiles. Well, the rest of my monsters, because realistically, the game is over. We win here. Like, it's just basically, what's he choosing? Okay, I guess he just really didn't like Happy Lover, I guess. Okay. And, and with this win, I'm also going to get a pretty good uh, wood monster available. Well, to me, because we only have Cockroach Knight. Right. And let's just uh, move forward, land one attack, so Baby Dragon can... Oh, Baby Dragon's just going to get the kill. Okay, you. so with that, that is game done. That is, well, that is game, set, match, that is Yuki, another W. Your grandpa win? Again, it's a tournament. No. <laughs> okay, so with that, that is area one complete. I think, unless there's a, like, a sixth boss as a duel. A sixth duel as a boss that we have to fight. You've improved your skills greatly, Yugi. I lose. But you held your own extremely well. <laughs> but don't let your guard down. The path ahead of you is still long and very competitive. I know, but I promise to defeat my opponents and win the tournament. I'll hold you to your promise, Yugi. Good luck. Thank you. Okay. Wow, we got a ton of EXP for that. Okay, so let's see here. We got a nice chunk of monster points. We got some more bonus EXP for everyone. Okay, Root Water hits level 3. Our other Fire Reaper also gets a level up. And now I can take the right arm of the Forbidden One and the Cockroach Knight. And as we finish off Area 1 and we can start up the second section of the game. In, in the next episode. Because, well, I am going to drop a save here. And end off today's episode. I'm going to quit out just to make sure that we don't get a cutscene or anything yet. Do we get a cutscene or something? I think we actually might. But we will see. Because we've never finished Area 1. Okay, no, it'll just tell it. Oh. Okay, it's just telling us that area is clear. Okay, so. Okay, Area 2 will be our next starting point. So we'll be starting up Area 2 in the next episode, and well, hope. Oh, wait, we can't go back. I mean, if I want to go and do one of those duels again, I can always just go and play a free duel. Anyway, in the next episode, we'll be starting up Area 2, and I'll also probably go and have a quick look at the store, see what's new. Win there. So, with that, with that, I'm going to end this episode off here. Feel free to leave a comment or click any of the buttons down below if you feel so inclined. And I will hopefully see you all next time for more Capsule Monster Coliseum. Okay, thanks for watching. Later.